one of the hardest and most important optimization decisions that you will need to make in your Google Ads campaigns is around your bidding strategies. And this is because if you're using the wrong bidding strategy or you've set your bidding strategy target too high or too low, it's gonna have a really negative effect on the total performance of your campaigns. Yes, that's right, just by choosing the wrong target ROAS or target CPA, this can have a more detrimental effect on your total Google Ads performance when compared to other optimization actions like your ad copy, your images, or even your product titles. And the reason for why it's so important to get your bidding strategy set correctly is because this is the strongest indicator or the strongest information that you're giving Google about what you want it to achieve. So when you're setting your target CPA or your target ROAS, you're telling Google is that this is the amount that you're willing to pay per conversion or this is the ROAS that you want. So this is the amount of revenue you want for your ad spend. But it's not just as simple as putting in a ROAS of a thousand percent and saying Google, that's what I wanna get. And the reason for that is because you need to be able to build up or train your account data to be able to perform at a certain level. Now, as it stands right now, there are currently three different types of bidding strategies that you can use. And the first one is your target impression share, which as the name suggests, you put in a target impression share, say for example, about 90% or 80%, and then Google will aim to achieve that. And now you can also put in some other indicators in there around saying that you want this to be the absolute top or you want it to be the top of page. So the absolute top being that number one position and the top of page being those top four positions. But the two that I really wanna focus on in today's video is talking about maximize conversions and maximize conversion value. And if you're familiar with Google Ads, you will know that the maximize conversion value also has an additional setting of target ROAS and maximize conversions also has that additional setting of target CPA or target cost per acquisition. And the target CPA and the target ROAS are the two bidding strategies that I wanna focus on in today's video. And as I've said, these are so important to get right. And right now, let's jump into a screen share so I can show you a graph I've prepared to really explain why this setting is so vitally important for your Google Ads performance. Now, what I'm actually taking you through here is a slide from my course, Sell More with Google, and I do go into this into further detail inside of that course, but what I wanted to show right here on my YouTube channel is really just take you through what the target ROAS is or the target CPA, and I wanna show you this graph so that you can really understand why setting a target ROAS or a target CPA goal either too early or too high can have a negative effect on the performance of your account. And this is why we're saying it's so important that you get your target ROAS right. Now it goes without saying that the goal for setting a campaign bidding strategy is that you're wanting Google to be able to give you a higher level of revenue or a higher number of conversions. And we want to see this green line where it's always going up. Now what would happen is if, if we set our target ROAS or our target CPA too high, this actually has the effect of lowering the revenue revenue or the number of conversions you're achieving. And the reason for that is because it limits your clicks and impressions. And the reason for that is because as we said before, you've got to train your account. And what we mean by that is you've got to have enough data fed into your Google Ads campaigns and accounts so that you can be ordered to be able to achieve the results that you want. So let's just say you wanted to achieve a target ROAS of 900%. So that would be the conversion value cost of 9.0. But at the moment, your account is only achieving a 3.0. What would happen is that Google just doesn't have enough data in your account to be able to know which are the exact search terms, audiences, demographics, time of the day, day of the week in order to achieve that. So because it doesn't know, it actually limits the amount of impressions, which obviously limits the amount of ROAS or revenue that you're gonna achieve. Now, the other thing from that is as well, if you set your target ROAS too low, so let's just say that you've got your target ROAS set at 200%, but your account is actually achieving a 500% ROAS, Google will just take it that as, well, you're happy with the 200% ROAS, we can get more traffic and more conversions, so we're just gonna be targeting that traffic. And that's why it's so important that you get this right. If you've got your target ROAS too high, you lower the number of impressions and clicks that your account is getting. If you've got that target ROAS too low, you're just gonna be getting junk traffic. So traffic that is not targeted for your products or your services. So that graph will give you a really clear explanation of why it's really important and what would happen if you set your target ROAS too high or what would happen if you set your target ROAS 
too low. Now, as I said, I'm gonna be taking you through some real life accounts and really showing you some of the ways that I've gone about and set my target ROAS goals. And I'm gonna be showing you that on a smaller spending account and also a larger spending account because there are some differences that you need to look at when you're faced with those two scenarios. But before we get into that, I wanted to take you through three core principles and the data that you need to review in order to be able to know exactly where and how you go about setting the correct campaign bidding strategies in Google Ads. Now, the first thing is, is that I'll be waiting until you at least have 30 conversions in your Google Ads campaign before you go through and set a target ROAS or a target CPA. And the reason for that is because you need to understand that when it comes to be using our maximized conversions or maximized conversions campaign bidding strategy is that Google is getting data from two sources. Now, the first source is what it calls index data, and that's where it looks at the competitors and your business niche. So if you're targeting something like men's t-shirts, it would take into account the account data and conversion data of all the different competitors who are targeting the same keywords or product titles in the areas that you are targeting. And the second level of data is your own campaign data. So looking at the people who are actually converting for your account. And that's why you wanna wait until you get those 30 conversions because you don't just wanna be using that index data. You also wanna have some data fed into your campaign and your account because that gives Google some further data to actually know which are the exact user searches which are leading to conversions for your products or your services because they might be slightly different to your competitors. And then at another level of that, it also lets you know what are the audiences and the demographics. So when we look at audiences, what are their previous search histories? What are their interests? What are their online web behaviors? Because once again, it might be slightly different to other competitors in your business niche. And then as well, once you've got those conversions, Google can start to go through and go that you might have a better conversion rate, say for example, on Wednesdays and Thursdays. So Google knows that between certain hours on certain days, that's when it should be bidding more aggressively because it's more likely that you're gonna be getting some conversions. So that first thing is, is that you wanna wait till you've got those 30 conversions. So you've got some extra account and campaign based data to be able to feed into Google's AI learning so it knows the profile and the search terms of what's gonna be more likely to generate those all important sales and conversions. And that now leads us to the next important point. Remember how I was just saying before that if Google picks up that Wednesdays and Thursdays are the days that you get those most conversions, it's highly, highly likely that when you switch over to a maximized conversions or a maximized conversion value bidding strategy, that your CPC will actually increase. This is one of the things that I see people freak out about is that they switch over to uh, maximized conversions or maximized conversion value, and they just see their CPC go through the roof. It's not uncommon, but what I always say is you need to hang on, hold your nerve, because it is also highly, highly likely that the number of conversions will also increase. And what is happening here is, if you've got say 30 conversions and if they've all happened at certain times of the day on, and on certain days of the week, I've seen cases where Google may spend double of your daily budget in a single day because that's what the data is telling Google to bid more aggressively for. So once again, using that example, if you have 50% of your conversions that happen on a Wednesday and Thursday, don't be surprised if you're spending the equivalent of 50% of your weekly budget across those two days. Now, it doesn't mean that Google will spend more of the budget by the end of the month, but it's prioritizing those days because that's when it knows it can get more conversions. And I've had cases of service providers where we've used a target CPA, where they'll get a space of three or four phone calls within two hours, and then they won't get another conversion for potentially another one and a half or two days. Once again, it's because the algorithm and Google's AI is picking up that it can get more conversions over the space of a week by focusing on those key days or key periods of time. And because Google is bidding more aggressively around certain search terms on certain audiences and certain times of the day or days of the week, that's gonna be driving up your CPC. And the way you just need to think about it is like this. So don't get freaked out when your CPC increases is because it ultimately comes back to what would you prefer? Would you prefer to be getting 10 conversions a week, still meeting your budget, but the CPC is $5, or would you prefer getting only three conversions a week, still spending that same budget, but your CPC is at a dollar? Obviously, you're gonna be choosing that first option of the high CPC 
and the higher conversions. And now this brings us to that third point before we go into those live screen shares. And that is, is that you wanna only be reviewing and changing your bid adjustments over 90 days of data. So generally when I do start a new campaign, usually unless this is like a second or a third campaign in my account, I won't go about setting a rock solid target ROAS or target CPA until after the first 90 days. Even if I've got those 30 conversions, I'll definitely switch it over to a maximized conversion value or a maximized conversions, but I'll hold off on that target because I wanna see 90 days of data. Now, the reason for that is because we know that Google does reach back about 90 days. And what we wanna be seeing is we wanna be seeing that when we go about setting that target ROAS or setting that target CPA, we wanna make sure that we're benchmarking it off and it's looking the same at the 30 day mark, the 60 day mark and the 90 day mark. And that's why if you've got my Google Ads e-commerce optimization checklist, you'll see that I've marked reviewing your bid optimization every 90 days. Now, if you don't have access to my Google Ads e-commerce optimization checklist, I encourage you to follow that link in the description below. And that's gonna give you free access to that checklist. And this is a checklist which I've designed and it lets you know exactly every single optimization action that you need to be completing for your Google Performance Max or your Google Shopping campaigns. And it even takes it a step further than that and actually lets you know when you need to be checking those actions. So whether you need to be doing it every week, every month or every 90 days. So now that we've set that all up, let's jump right into a screen share so I can take you through those data points that we wanna be looking at in real life accounts. Now, I do wanna let you know that when we go through these two accounts, in these two campaigns. It can very much be looking at like a stock market or a crypto chart in that you're looking at different lines on the sheet and you're trying to pull out some different trends. So the first trend that I wanna be showing you is that more often than not, you will see that your impressions and your conversion value will follow each other. Now, this is very much true for performance max campaigns. So what you do need to be careful of is, especially at the start of a campaign, you can see from here, where our impressions started to go down, our conversion value also went down. Now, when you get your target bidding right and you're able to feed in that extra data and those extra conversions, you can actually get the situation like we've got through here where we're starting to see that conversion value move away from the impressions. And that's a really positive sign. So this is what it looks like on a smaller spending account because these ones over this period from September to February that you're looking at has just spent just over three and a half. So a very, very small account. But you can see from there, they've been able to achieve things on you know, at the end of January where they were getting, you know, for under $200 spend, they were getting up to $1,600, $1,700 in value. And then once again, on a larger spending account, so this account, was spending up to 24,000. Now, I will also point out that this account actually has three campaigns the same size as this, so they were spending up to 75K. And this exact campaign that I'm showing you is actually one of the smaller ones, so it was actually higher than that. And once again, you can see the same trend where the impressions are generally following the conversion value. We did throw in some different testing in here. And once again, you saw this impressions go up and the conversion didn't move. But then we've got it right, and you can see from here where the conversion value has gone up ahead of those impressions. Now. This is what I would call here a healthy trend where, where you've got an increase in your conversion rate. So you can see here, now we're increasing our conversion rate and we're starting to see these impressions continue to go up. And that's the type of data that you're looking at. Now what I wanna do through here is I wanna overlay our conversion value cost and also our average target ROAS. Now, if you're not aware of what the average target ROAS is, this is a really great uh, tool that Google introduced late last year. And you can also set it for average target CPA if you're using that for your accounts. And it kind of gives you a benchmark and a marker of the changes that you've we've made in our target ROAS settings. And then you can see the actual results of what's happened from there. Now, the thing that's uh, what you wanna be checking is that you wanna be checking your impressions because as you can see through here, we've increased our target ROAS and our impressions went down. Remember that curve we we're looking at before. If it's too high, the impressions will go down. And what the problem is as well, is that if you do do that, very, very likely, a lot of the times that conversion value will also go down. So what we did through here is that we went through and we actually lowered our target ROAS. So we lowered it from 850 down to 750. And you can see that it didn't actually cause a massive spike back up in our impressions, but what it did do is it started to move this green line back up again. And we now actually have got that target ROAS at 
nine and a half, seven and a half, 8.36. And if we were just to do that over the last 30 days, you can see that our target ROAS is actually set in behind our conversion value cost. And that's actually a healthy value of where you want it to be. The reason for that is you can see we had one big spike here, which is a larger order. So I don't take that into account as much. And that's why I'm still happy with our average target ROAS being at 750 with that conversion value cost at eight. 27. And because as well, you can see with this massive spike in our conversion value in here, which was probably from a large purchase, you can actually see that our impression scores didn't go up. So that's one thing that you just do need to keep in mind when you are going through and setting this is that you always want that average target ROAS to be a little bit behind. I usually recommend about 20% behind your actual conversion value cost. So for this one, taking out this actual big day that we had, our conversion value cost is probably sitting closer to the high sevens. So that's why I'm really, really happy with this conversion value cost still being at the 750 mark. When we start to see this conversion value cost hitting 8.5 for a period of 90 days or more, that's when I would look to increase this target ROAS again. And if we were to go back to, let's just say, take it back to the start of December. So we're looking at December, January, and February. This target ROAS, once again, it's at eight, but it's taking into account that large day. So I would just still be holding it where it is at the moment. Now, if we go to that larger account, this one, we actually actually do some different testing and we did it in three little zones. Now, as I said to you, we've, because this campaign has actually been running for about nine months, we had a good amount of data. That's why I was happy to do these tests to the average target ROAS at different times until we got it right. And you can see from here, what I wanna show you, the direct result as soon as we added in this target ROAS, so we dropped the target ROAS. And the reason why we removed the target ROAS is I did wanna do a little bit of a reset because our impressions were dropping so far. We were also doing some other things in the account. So we just wanted to sort of refresh everything. And you can see our impressions went back up. And then when we started to build in a little bit of a conversion value cost, we can see that we set our target ROAS at 280 and that was based off because we had conversion value cost of over a 30 day period, it was sitting at the high twos from memory. But you can see when we did do this, it just wasn't enough data and our impressions went up and our conversion value wasn't following. So what we then did is that we reintroduced it for a third time and you can see this was the time that it was successful. So it was, we were seeing an increase in our conversion value. Once again, a big day. So we don't wanna to read too much into it, but we're really, really happy with how this is progressing. And we're gonna be able to slowly now build up this target ROAS until we get this account above a five. The reason why this user, they're happy with a ROAS of five because they have a lot of repeat customers. Whereas for this other one, we're heading for a ROAS of 10 because it's more of a single purchase campaign. Now, I know there was a lot of data to actually show you through those two screens. And what I really wanna reinforce is that when you do go about setting your target ROAS and your target CPA goals is that you always need to be looking at your impressions your conversion value and also your cost per conversion if you're using a target CPA or your conversion value cost if you're using that target ROAS. And what you're really looking for is if you do set a target ROAS or a target CPA and you see both your impressions drop and also your number of conversions, you may wanna consider removing that or lowering that marker that you've set for your target ROAS. As I showed you in that second example, it actually took us three times to get that set correctly. So I'm not gonna hide the fact that this is actually not a straightforward decision, but what I can reassure you with is that if you do always look at those data points, so always look at your impressions and then always look at your cost per conversion and the conversion value. You'll be able to draw out and make a really clear decision on whether setting that target ROAS has been positive or negative for your account. If it's been positive, keep it going. If it's been negative, maybe lower that target ROAS and then you can start to build it up once you've got more data into your account. I hope that's helped and given you some really practical examples about how you can go about setting that right campaign bidding for your Google Ads campaigns. Hey, it's been an absolute pleasure having me with you. If we haven't met yet, my name is Aaron Young. I'm from Define Digital Academy and I'm your 15,000 hour Google Ads master. And remember, if you want some extra help in how to optimize your performance max and your shopping campaigns, make sure you follow that link in the description below so you can get a copy of my Google Ads e-commerce optimization checklist. And to help you even further, why don't you go through and watch this video right here where I take you through the step-by-step -step process in optimizing performance max campaigns, or you can watch this one here that shows you how you can optimize your shopping campaigns. Thank you again. See you next time.